Hi, I'm Sonja Englert. Welcome everyone to my airplane design tutorial number 13. In my last video, I was talking about the aerodynamic center and how to find the mean aerodynamic chord and why they are important for the longitudinal stability analysis. In this video, I want to share some thoughts on the engine and propeller installation. During the initial fuselage design, the position of the engine was defined in order to get the airplane CG in the right place. But because the engine is usually the heaviest single item on an airplane, it can be useful to retain some flexibility as to where it exactly ends up, to correct for errors in the mass distribution assumptions. If a separate engine mount is used, this is easy enough. Some airplanes, though, use part of the fuselage structure as engine mount, which means that the lower part of the cowling is fixed. Don't do that! This is the case, unfortunately, on my Pulsar, and I have cursed the designer every time I need to get to the lower spark plugs. They are almost inaccessible, even though my hands are really not large. It takes a lot of time and contortions to replace them. It is needless to say that on my motor glider, I designed the lower cowling to be removable. There, the same job is now a matter of minutes. I don't want to get too detailed on the engine installations in this video, because I have covered everything associated with it in depth in my book, Efficient Power Plant Installations. Some of the things I do want to go into here are the initial design decisions. One of the decisions is usually made for you by the engine manufacturer, and that is what type of engine mount is required. Just look at where the attach points are on the engine for the engine mount, in the back or underneath the engine. A decision the airplane designer has to make is which angles to mount the engine at. The choice in rotation about the x-axis is simple. It should be level or zero degrees. The requirement for the angle about the z-axis was already discussed in my video about the vertical tail. If the propeller rotates clockwise, as seen from behind, the slipstream will yaw the airplane to the left during takeoff and climb. To reduce the amount of right rudder needed to fly coordinated, the engine can be tilted slightly to the right. This, this will produce a yawing moment to the right that re reduces the need for rudder deflection and high power. The angle needed depends on the static thrust the propeller produces and is typically 1 to 3 degrees. There may also be a benefit to tilting the engine around the y-axis to reduce pitching moment changes with power changes. This depends on how far away the thrust line is from the center of gravity. If the CG of the airplane, when it is fully loaded, is above the thrust line, as can be the case for high-wing airplanes, applying power will cause the airplane to pitch up. This is bad news in slow flight. A typical situation where this can lead to an accident is a go-around, when the pilot goes from idle to full power while in slow flight. If he is not prepared to counter the pitch-up, the airplane might stall close to the ground. In this case, it is beneficial to cant the engine down by several degrees to reduce or eliminate the pitch-up from thrust. In order to calculate the loads that the engine mount will have to withstand, we need to know how much weight is attached to the engine mount, and where the CG of all that weight is. The engine weight can be obtained from the manufacturer, but make sure you know what it all includes, or rather what it does not include. Items that are usually installed on the engine, but may not be included in the manufacturer's engine, wa engine weight, are the exhaust, air filter, and induction system, oil cooler, filter, and hoses, fuel hoses, belt-driven alternator, baffling, engine sensors, and oil. This can add up to quite a lot of pounds, and must not be neglected. Since the propeller with spinner, backing plate, and hardware is also attached to the engine, it must be included in the list of items supported by the engine mount. The ignition system may be completely attached to the engine, like magnetos, or components may be mounted remotely, as it is the case for some electronic ignition systems. The loads on the engine mount and its attachment at the firewall will depend on the mass of the engine and the load factor that the airplane is designed for. 
but mass loads are not the only loads. Additional loads may be introduced into the engine mount if a nose gear is attached to it. The engine mount structure must transfer those loads into the fuselage, typically at the firewall bulkhead. The engine mount loads and therefore its weight will be lowest the closer the engine can be mounted to the fuselage structure. Obviously, the access to the back side of the engine for maintenance needs to be considered. The other loads come from the engine torque, the propeller thrust, and gyroscopic loads from the rotating blades during maneuvers, such as a spin. The propeller manufacturer should be able to provide some information as to what thrust the propeller can produce. The worst case for loads is usually during takeoff at full power and small pitch. The gyroscopic loads depend on the polar mass moment of inertia of the blades. This is a number that the propeller manufacturer should also be able to provide. The units are either kilogram times meter squared or slug times feet squared. The lightest blades with the lowest inertia are those made from wood. Aluminum blades are the heaviest and composite is somewhere in between. Verify that the propeller is suitable for the engine. It may have a limit of what propeller moment of inertia is allowed. Another consideration is the vibration characteristics of the engine propeller combination, especially for met metal propellers, which can fail if there are critical frequencies. Wood is the least critical propeller material in that respect. For the propeller installation, you need to consider that it is a moving part, both in rotation and translation, from flexing on the engine rubber shock mounts. It needs to have sufficient clearance to the cowling and other airframe parts. If it is a variable pitch or feathering propeller, look at how the twisting of the blades would affect the clearance, which should be at least half an inch. The propeller ground clearance is another consideration for the engine mount design. The certification regulations such as 14 CFR part 23 give some guidance as to what has been proven to be sufficient. If the airplane has a nose gear, the tip of the propeller should have at least 7 inch inches ground clearance for the worst case, which is at gross weight and forward CG. You should also check that the propeller tips clear the ground if the nose wheel tire is flat and the nose gear strut shock absorber is fully compressed. For a tailwheel airplane, the clearance should be at least 9 inches and that is in level attitude, not with the tail on the ground. So you have to decide on the maximum di diameter of the propeller that can be used when positioning it vertically on the fuselage. The maximum propeller diameter in combination with its RPM also influences the noise it creates. The larger it is and the higher the RPM is, the higher is the tip Mach number and noisier it gets. The tip Mach number must not exceed 0.9. Ideally, it is between 0.6 and 0.8 for low noise and best efficiency. The engine compartment is considered to be a fire zone because the engine and exhaust get very hot during operation and could ignite things. This means that the structural elements and engine controls must be made from fireproof materials, typically steel. The use of flammable materials in the engine compartment must be avoided or they must be protected, as it is in the case with fuel and oil lines. This leads us briefly to engine cooling. You should plan ahead on where to have inlets and outlets in the cowling, so that sufficient air can flow through the engine compartment. For more information on that, please get my engine installation book, where I have gone into a lot of detail on this topic. This concludes the overview on engine installations and this video. In the next video, I will explain what flutter is and how to best design for avoiding it.